Hey, Ari here, and today I want to take a look at a pretty awesome piece of hardware. We'll be taking a look at the Asus 27-inch uh, gaming monitor. Its model number is MG278Q. It is a 16x9 widescreen monitor that is in a 2560x1440 resolution. It's capable of driving your games up to 144 hertz, and it has one millisecond response time. I'd like to gloss over a lot of the technical information with this review, just because there's so much to cover. And I'd rather focus more on the experience than just running down a list of specifications of what this monitor has to offer. We'll still cover some of that information and a breakdown of what's included. Starting off, I'd say the monitor was packaged very well with hard cell foam, and there were only a few small dings in the box, and nothing appeared to be damaged or out of place while unboxing. Removing all of the accessories included, you can see your quick start guide and warranty information, as well as the range of cables that are included. There's an audio extension so you can plug your headphones in right off the monitor, a DisplayPort cable, an HDMI and a DVI cable, as well as a USB extension cable for the two USB ports on the monitor and your power cord. The monitor itself is in a protective bag that just slipped over the whole monitor. Once removed, you can see all of the connectors that are on the MG278Q. Starting from right to left, you can see the audio extension and headphone jack, DisplayPort 1.2, one HDMI 2.0, one HDMI 1.4, and a DVI connection. There's also two USB 3.0 ports that also have quick charging. And finally, the power connector on the far right end of the back. Moving along to the monitor arm and the base, you can see the arm is removable with a little latch, allowing you to take the whole thing off if you'd like to use the Visa mounting points for another type of stand or monitor arm. It pops in and out pretty easy, and it feels pretty secure when it's in place. The base is also a nice and sturdy belt quality, and you can see it notches into place and has one skirt to mount it onto the monitor arm. Assembly is just as simple by swinging the arm from portrait to landscape, notching the base into place, and tightening the locking screw nice and snug. The MG278Q has a rather generous amount of height adjustment, up to 150 millimeters. The stand also allows for a decent amount of tilt, swivel, and pivot, with a rotation occurring at the center of the base. I should mention that this is my first real experience with a panel that's faster than 60 Hz, and as you can see I'm swapping out from an older 27-inch ASUS monitor that's only 1920 by 1080 You can also see that this monitor is really sleek in comparison to my other panels, and I really like how thin the bezels are. It almost doesn't feel like a 27-inch monitor with how thin the bezels are. Once plugged in, you'll want to take some time calibrating the monitor. There are several presets that you can choose from. Some of them aren't that bad either, but I always like to try and dial monitors in as best as possible. There are a ton of options in the menu, and it's all laid out pretty well, so you shouldn't have too much trouble navigating the menu and sifting through all the options. Starting at the top with Game Visual, there are several presets you can choose from. Scenery, Racing, Cinema, RTS slash RPG, FPS, and RGB. Moving down, there is a blue light filter with five different levels, starting at zero through four. Zero being off and each one after definitely changes the warmth of the display. Color, which controls your brightness, contrast, saturation, color temperature, skin tone, and smart view. Most of these are pretty obvious settings, and some of these options may be grayed out depending on some of the other modes and settings you've already chosen. You can see that saturation and skin tone are grayed out here for me. Smart view is something that I left turned off here which is meant to make shadow detail more visible, but it raises the black levels and changes the contrast just too much for my liking. Image settings contains sharpness, tracery, aspect control, vivid pixel, and ASCR. Sharpness is pretty self-explanatory, but great out for me here. Trace free is ASUS's version of overdrive, which is meant to reduce the amount of motion blur on screen without introducing too much ghosting. Aspect control allows you to scale the screen up for resolutions that are below 2560 by 1440. Vivid Pixel is something I left at zero since I felt it blew out the sharpness around text too much. And ASCR stands for ASUS Smart Contrast Ratio, and is grayed out in two of the modes. It definitely bumps up the brightness and contrast when it is available, but I usually like to set those options manually. There are settings for sound since this monitor does come with two 2 watt speakers, but I doubt most people end up using them as even a simple 2.1 speaker setup or decent pair of headphones will easily outclass just about any built-in speakers you can find. 
The input section allows you to switch between all of your available connections. The monitor will automatically connect to the first detected source, and if you have multiple sources hooked up to the monitor, you'll need to go here or click the dedicated button devoted to switching between active sources connected to the monitor. System setup is just as comprehensive as everything we've already looked at, with extra features and changes you can make to how the OSD operates, as well as displaying current information, turning the power light on and off, locking keys, and changing settings for USB charging on other devices. The one standout feature on here is called Game Plus, which allows you to put up a crosshair in the middle of the screen, a countdown timer, or an FPS counter. You can only have one of these active at a time, but they're all pretty nice additions to an already well-rounded monitor. The last thing on the menu is called My Favorites, which is great if you like to configure more than one custom profile with different color profiles for switching between different kinds of media. I think it's a really nice feature that will save you a lot of time instead of having to make all of those changes manually every time. Now that we've covered most of the features and settings this monitor has to offer, it's time to get to the good stuff. One of the first things I ended up doing was literally just moving windows around on the monitor. It was immediately apparent to me just how much more fluid and consistent everything looked and felt. It may seem a tad silly to you, it might not show very well on camera, but this was just the beginning of how blown away I am using a monitor that's this fast. Gaming was a real treat, and I can't actually see going back to a regular monitor that's only 60Hz. I played around with a couple of games like Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Battlefield 4, Rainbow Six Siege, and Grand Theft Auto 5. CSGO and BF4 are a bit faster paced than Rainbow Six and GTA 5, but they all tested very well and I'm still completely impressed with this panel. CSGO and BF4 felt completely different to me, and I don't think I really noticed any image tearing, ghosting, or lag of any kind. It almost felt cartoonish to me with how smooth and responsive everything felt, and it definitely took a little getting used to. Rainbow Six looked just as impressive and really brought out a lot of subtle detail in the game. I do want to talk about games like Grand Theft Auto, which are more of an open world style game. Since this is also a huge bump in resolution for me, I had to turn down the texture quality to stay under 3GB of video memory. You'll definitely want to have a pretty powerful graphics card if you want to drive some games like Grand Theft Auto V, especially if you want to max out all the texture and quality settings. My system still ran really well with just a single GTX 780, and since I am running an NVIDIA graphics card, that brings me to the one thing I haven't mentioned about this monitor at all yet. The MG278Q is also a FreeSync monitor, meaning you'll have to own an AMD graphics card if you want to take advantage of that feature. With the latest AMD software while using an AMD graphics card, this monitor supports a variable refresh rate of 42 to 144 Hz, which will give you an incredibly smooth gaming experience as long as you don't experience any huge drops in frame rate. I would have liked to have tested this feature out during the review, but I currently only have a GTX 780 in my system. Even so, my experience without it has still been really positive. I'm sure your experiences will vary from mine to some degree, and I'm not saying that image tearing or ghosting are completely gone, but for the most part this has been a huge contrast compared to a regular 60Hz panel, and the amount of tearing and ghosting that I have noticed is significantly less than my previous monitor by a long shot. And that's pretty much all there is to cover in this review. I haven't had any problems with the display like backlight bleed or any stuck or dead pixels. And I have seen a few comments mentioning these issues, so it is possible that you might encounter a bad panel. The only other thing worth mentioning as a downside is that this is a TN panel, which are completely fine for gaming, as TN panels are known for having faster response times, but they also do have a couple of drawbacks. TN panels usually suffer from poor viewing angles, and if you look far enough off to one side, you will see the display lose some of its visibility. But I also don't think this is much of an issue since you should be sitting front and center looking straight at the display for the most part. Colors can also be a little muted on TN panels, and definitely aren't as crisp or accurate as they would be on an IPS panel. I do feel that colors are a little bit softer on this display, but again, not to any extreme that I really have any complaint. I hope you've enjoyed this review of the ASUS MG278Q. I've certainly had a blast with this monitor. Before we go, I'd like to mention that this monitor comes with a three-year warranty and that it's currently being sold for around $500 online. And this one was purchased for $399 on sale. So keep your eye out if you are interested in this monitor and hopefully it'll go on sale again. I also want to thank another good friend of mine for allowing me to do such a nice review with this monitor and spending the time with it. And uh, I really appreciate it. So thank you very much, Dag, for doing that. 
And as always, you can like and subscribe for this channel and stay tuned. I do have more videos coming down the pipe shortly. So if you would like to follow for more content, stay tuned. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.